Hi everybody and welcome back to The Upper Room. This week we're talking about different forms of prayer. Most Many Protestants have a problem with the way that, that we pray the rosary um, and they think that that type of prayer isn't right because the Bible tells us to not, have rep uh, to not pray repetitious prayers as the heathens do. But um, if you look in the translation in Greek, the word repetitious is called balagaset, which actually means um, to babble or to stammer. It doesn't mean the same word over and over again. If you could think of one thing that you could say to someone that you love, the very best word that you could say to them all the time, wouldn't you tell them? The thing is, is that Protestants separate uh, uh, prayer from the rosary because they think that there should be only one form of prayer. When the truth is, there's many forms of prayer. Uh, I can think of three forms of prayer that I practice regularly. Uh, I pray just as a Protestant would, uh, verbally, when I speak with God, when I'm alone, when I talk to him, when I bring my problems to him by talking to him. But I also pray the rosary and I pray different chaplets. These are chaplets. The rosary is a chaplet. The seven sorrows is a chaplet. The divine mercy is a chaplet. These chaplets, we are instructed to pray either by, from saints who have interacted with God um, or from Christ himself. Now, when we pray a chaplet, there are promises attached to each one. So if we pray those chaplets regularly, those promises come true in our lives. It is a form of meditation. The rosary is basically the Bible on beads. It's as if when you're reading a book and you paint the picture in your mind, when you pray on the rosary beads, you are meditating on the life of Jesus and you're meditating on his resurrection and his crucifixion and all the things that he went through. And when you put those images in your mind, when you come to each mystery of the rosary, it helps cleanse your thoughts and it helps keep you focused on Christ our Savior. It is much different than reading the Bible. Reading the Bible is a form of meditation. As we read the Bible, Christ talks to us through his living word. So is receiving the Eucharist. We receive the Eucharist on our tongue. It is the very word of God because it is Christ's flesh. We receive the wine uh, uh, during uh, communion, which is actually transfigured into his blood of the new covenant. Both of these uh, sacramentals are mysteries of our faith. And when we consume them, we are abiding in what Christ taught us. Another form of prayer is contemplative prayer. This is the type of prayer where you just sit in quietness and stillness. You might have some soft music playing and you say absolutely nothing. This is where you bring your thoughts to God. In the Catholic Church, we have something called adoration. This is where the body of Christ is put on display in something called a monstrance, where it is demonstrated so that we may sit in Christ's presence and adore him. So we sit quietly with our thoughts and we bring them to Christ so that he can take our worries, our cares, our struggles, our stresses, and we sit in the stillness and quietness with God. These are different forms of prayers. I was a Protestant before and I realize now I was limiting myself from getting closer to God by only having one form of prayer. With these other forms of prayers, I was able to understand at a much greater level the great mysteries of God because Christ teaches us on all different platforms. And when we only pray one type of prayer, it's as if we're only communicating with him in one way when there's many other ways to communicate. If I came to you at your house and I spoke with you, I'm communicating with you. Or if I stayed home and I picked up the phone and called you, I'm using the phone to talk to you. Or if I sat down and wrote you a letter and mailed it to you, you would read the letter and I would be communicating with you in that way. 
just in those forms from our natural realm, there are spiritual forms of uh, communication with God that go far beyond what we verbally say. Let me ask you a question. If you were mute, how could you pray? Exactly. You could only pray with your thoughts. So you have to admit that there is more than one form of prayer. We can't just sit here and act like the rosary that was given to us by the Mother of God, the seven sorrows that was given to us by the Mother of God, the Divine Mercy Chaplet that was given to us by Christ himself through an apparition to, the, to St. Maria Faustina Kowalska mean nothing. There are promises attached to them. And as I have prayed these with, with these sacramentals, great miracles have happened in my life. It's almost as if they're keys to opening a dialogue between you and God in a distinct way. And the promises have come true for me. I'm on fire in my faith. I love God deeply. This does not bring you further away from God, but in fact brings you closer. With one form of prayer, you may have a relationship with Christ, but you have no clue about how close it could possibly bring you if you tried other forms and added it to your prayer life that you have now. So thanks again for watching The Upper Room. I hope this video was informative and I hope I shed some light on different forms of prayer. Thanks again and I'll see you next week.